This video is brought to you by Sporlin, quality, integrity, and tradition. Got a call on a kitchen AC not working today. We walk up to the unit. We have no LED lights lit. We also checked power at this guy. We have no power. So we need to uh, figure out what's going on here. So we come over here to our disconnect switch right here and it's on. So we need to start downstairs, but what we're gonna do is go ahead and turn this off because in case we find a tripped breaker or something, we don't want to reset it. Now, the next thing we want to do before we go downstairs is we're just going to go ahead and open this guy up and just inspect it. Look for direct shorts to ground, make sure all the motors spin just before we try to reset something. So, all right, so we're going to check just really quickly everything to ground. We're just going to tone it out. You know, we're just looking for anything obvious nothing and then we're going to go to the load side of every contactor and tone it out to ground and we're just checking that so far nothing um, while he's doing that we're going to go just kind of visually inspect all the capacitors don't see any swollen capacitors i'll come over here look at the condenser fan motors we'll give them all a spin make sure they're good and then we'll come over here to the indoor blower motor give it a spin Again, power's off. Make sure nothing jumps out at us. It's not locked up. Okay, everything looks good. So we just need to basically go downstairs now, see if there's a breaker off or what. All right, check this out. So we have a direct short to ground. Keep checking the other legs, nothing. So we have one leg shorted to ground on this guy right here. Let's go ahead and we want to very carefully pull these off because the, the terminals might be jacked up and they might blow out on you. And then we're going to check the compressor to ground. So go ahead and check to this guy. Nothing. There it is. And there it is. Okay. So we have a grounded compressor. So we're going to go ahead and isolate this guy. Um, we, uh, we checked the other ones, nothing there. So this is why you check this stuff because we don't want to reset the breaker and then have it trip again or blow a main or anything like that. You always check everything to ground to see what's going on. And guys, I see the comments. I see you guys saying, don't use tone, use continuity. It gives you continuity and tone on these things. Okay. So we're paying attention to everything. Um, all right. So we're going to go downstairs. Uh, pretty much guarantee we're going to have a tripped breaker, but we're going to isolate this compressor and then we'll go from there. Whenever you have a grounded out compressor, you always wanna just see if there's refrigerant in the system. Spray it, give it a smell. That smells horrible. If you guys have never smelled what burnt oil and refrigerant smells like, it's a horrible smell. So um, we know that that refrigerant's trash, the compressor's trash, we're gonna have to do a complete uh, acid cleanup on the system, purging with nitrogen, um, HH core dryers, which is high wax removal, uh, if the customer even approves this, which I have a feeling they will because I've heard that you can't get these units right now. So we're gonna go ahead, nothing else was grounded at the moment. We're gonna go ahead and go downstairs, try to find the breaker, reset it, and then come up here and check out the rest of the unit. All right, and we've gone down to the breaker panel. It's tripped. We have to turn it off, then turn it back on to reset it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and turn on power. Unit's gonna start up. Um, we're going to uh, quickly put our service gauges on the first and the second stage just to see how they're operating. And we'll watch the unit operations to see the condenser fan motors run and everything. Uh, we're definitely gonna have to change a compressor, but we just kinda wanna get a general idea. We're not gonna go crazy through the unit, but just a general idea if there's any other issues. All right, our unit just turned on. So we have one compressor, two compressors, and obviously this one's not running. So we'll see what the fan motors are doing. Two fan motors are running, but the other two might not run. They're, they're based off of pressure and temperature, so, or pressure. So we're gonna go through it, gauge up on the other first two, make sure there's nothing funky going on here. It's interesting because there's really no, like usually if it's been overheating, you'll see the sticker overheated or the top paint coming off. I don't see that, but there is like a white film 
to the side of the compressor and there's a white film to the side of the first stage too it's kind of weird i almost wonder if it's been flooding back but the indoor blower motor's running so on a compressor change out like this if the customer ends up having us repair it we would quote because it's a burnout we don't know what caused it to go bad so we would quote a compressor a txv add burnout dryers and then which are basically just spoiling hh cores suction and liquid and then we would um uh, uh flush the system out with nitrogen we cut it in multiple spots and blow the entire system out with nitrogen that would be our our procedure all right my other two condenser fan motors turned on so they're all running now it was kind of tripping us out because the saturation temperature we were we were running like a 46 degree evaporator coil and then all of a sudden boom it started dropping um but it's because the condenser fan motors turned on now we're not doing a full analysis on this it's about 80 ish degrees so 90 100 so i don't know it might even be in the lot the high 70s um but this is not scaring me too much now this isn't a full analysis we're going to go ahead and jump onto the second stage see what's going on there just making sure there's nothing crazy all right second stage or second compressor again nothing too scary i'm not doing a full analysis but condensing temps about 106 this is r22 43 degree evaporator this is fine i mean this unit's operational we got to change that compressor fig we don't know what caused it so that's why we'll change the expansion valve with the replacement um but other than that we won't know we'll evaluate the whole system once we get all three compressors running but the condenser doesn't look too bad the pressures aren't reflecting i mean it looks clean all the condenser fan motors are running there's not really much more we can do on this guy uh, looks like we've done we've done some repairs. Looks like a condenser was repla repaired right here because there's a bracket sticking out. Um, so yeah, I don't know if the customer is going to fix this unit or not, but it's operational for now. It's safely isolated so that third compressor doesn't come on, and we'll just give them a big picture quote. It is so important to not just reset a circuit breaker. Okay, you always need to investigate and dig further to try to figure out why the breaker tripped. I've told some stories before the cliff notes of it are there was one catastrophic thing that happened to me where I reset a circuit breaker. Actually, I replaced fuses without checking for shorts or anything like that. No direct, you know, didn't do anything. I just put new fuses in it and it blew the fuses right away. Okay. I went ahead again. This was way in the infancy of my career. I went ahead and put new fuses in it again, turned it on. And then all of a sudden the building went black. OK, and what it did was it blew the main, the main that controlled not not just a panel, right? Not just the breaker in the panel, but the main that controlled an entire panel. It blew it, tripped it. So I went downstairs to reset the main and the main failed. It could not be reset and the entire main melted internally and had to be replaced. OK, so was it my fault that the main, you know, I mean, it wasn't my fault, but I could have prevented that right? By not just changing fuses. Okay. So that's a worst case scenario. Um, and, but it's so important, you know, because you can cause more damage. Now this compressor, um, you know, who knows how bad it is inside. And by just continuously resetting it, resetting it, resetting it, we can cause some issues. We can make the problem worse right? So you always want to investigate, dig through it, try to find the source, look at the fan motors, do a big picture diagnosis, right? Look at everything. You, you check the refrigerant, see if it's burnt, if it actually has refrigerant in it. There's nothing worse than quoting a compressor job and not knowing that the system's completely out of refrigerant because there's leaks in the condenser too. So you come back, you quote the job, you come back to do it and you're like, oh my gosh, it needs a new condenser now, you know, big picture that thing, right? Always look at the big picture always give a big picture quote. It doesn't mean that they're going to approve a big picture quote, but at least you did your due diligence and you covered your butt and you gave them all the information and let the customer do with it as they will, right? So stay tuned. We don't know where this one's going to go. I don't know if the customer is going to approve the repair. Um, I don't know if they're going to replace the unit. We'll let you know once we figure it out. Um, I really appreciate you guys making it to the end of the video. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. And uh, we will catch you on the next one.